So, Brady, you must have seen uh, out there on the internet or in classrooms across the, up and down the country the old uh, six seven. So, I'm going to tell you about that, the meme that's sort of taken over the world and is the bane of every school teacher across across the land. I've heard of it, but what is it? So, yeah, I mean, so I've got kids who are sort of, you know, like twelve and fourteen. So, so it's very sort of prominent there, and it's and, and oh, double six and seven. Oh wow! Didn't you notice that? <laughs> It means literally nothing. It's like six, seven. So it's empty. I mean, it has an origin, but but it's it's really. So if you're a, if you're a teacher in a class and you dare say the number six, the whole class is going to go six, seven, and it's like, oh my god, it's so annoying. So there's like it's something you say, and there's emotion. You have to do a little motion. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong, by the way, because I'm like some old old fella. You've got kids. In every classroom, up and down the land, doing six, seven, six, seven, driving their teachers absolutely mad. My, my sister-in-law, she's a school teacher, uh, Kathy, and she, it's the thing that she hates most in the universe. It's, she absolutely hates it. Keir Starmer got into trouble recently because he was in a, a classroom and uh, I think they went to page six in a book and he went six, seven, and uh, it'd been banned in that school because the teachers were so annoyed by it. So he got into trouble for that. So it's up and down the land. It's driving everybody mad. But I think it's time to sort of reclaim six, seven because of course they're numbers and numbers are maths. So let's do some interesting maths with six and seven, eh? Yeah, it's six, six seven. seven! Okay, so let's, where should we start? So six, seven is a perfect prime pair. So what do I mean by that? So so that's uh, so of course six is a, a perfect number. So a perfect number is a number that's equal to the the sum of its divisors. So let's take let's look at six. Its divisors are one, two, and three. Well, we won't and six, but you don't count the number itself. If you add these together, you get six. So that's a perfect number. Twenty-eight is also a perfect number. Divisors of twenty-eight are going to be one, two, four. 7 and 14, right? And you add those together and you get 28 as well. Perfect numbers are a big deal. They're pretty rare. And so obviously perfect prime pairs are rare because there's 6 is, is perfect. 7 is prime. Actually, um, 28 and 29 are a perfect prime pair. Actually, that's, that's another one. There aren't that many. They're, 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 I actually only could find a, a small handful and I'm not clear if there's if any more are known. This number, 33 million five hundred and fifty. D336. That number is perfect. Uh, and of course, this number is prime. Okay, so that's the next one I'm aware of. Then you've got this one as well, which is another another combination. This number is perfect. And this number is prime. These are the only ones I know about. So he's got six, seven. Six, seven. There we go. Yeah. Oh, they've got to do it. Right? Got to do the hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, seven, 28, 29. This one and this one. And that's all the ones that I could find. Perfect numbers are very rare, actually. They're, they're not common. They're not easy to find. But you, Clear Smart Guy, that he, that he was, came up with a way to find them. So you take a Mersenne prime. Okay, so it's two to the p minus one, so it's a prime of that form. Okay, so let's assume this is a Mersenne prime, and you can construct this number, two p minus one. Okay, so this number, you know all its uh, all its factors, so they are the Mersenne prime itself, this one here, and then all the multiples of two that you get from here, right? And you add them all together, and you will get this. This is what Euclid showed, and that this is this is a perfect number. So this is this is a way to not, get not for all p's. No, they have to be. That has to be Mersenne. Right. right. It has to be a Mersenne prime. Yeah. Uh, but which, it, which only happens for some p's. Which only happens for some p's. And then what you could do then is, is just look through all these for all the Mersenne primes that you know. You can generate the corresponding perfect number and then you can try and figure out adding one to it is going to give you a prime number. So it's not, not straightforward, but that's the search method you could do. All of these ones, by the way, they all fall into this category. So the p's, this one's p equals two. You can check that, so you get 2 to the 2 minus 1 is, is 4 minus 1 is 3, and that's just going to give you a 2, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, this one is p equals 3, this one is p equals 13, and this one is p equals 19. But these are all constructed this way. So you notice all the perfect numbers in, this, in these examples at least, and, and actually these ones, they're all even, right? We don't know of any odd ones. We don't know whether or not they exist. We, we think they pro possibly do. But it's one of the mysteries of, of mathematics is whether there's an odd perfect number. If it exists, it's got to be really, really big. Um, it's got to be bigger than 10 to the 1500. So if, it, if, it's, if it exists, it's bigger than that. If it does exist, it won't be part of a 
perfect prime pair. Can't possibly be no because no. it'll have an even next to it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so okay, so that's but okay, so we we won't stop there. All right, you want more paper for your next six seven? All right, so six seven. Uh, where, where else you didn't do the hands. I've got to do the hand. I did do that. Uh, six seven. Where else does it appear? Does it appear in pi? Do you reckon? Six or seven? Yeah. Of course it does. Of course it does. You know where? Uh, does it appear in the first hundred digits? Just. It's the 99th and the hundredth digits of pi. Ooh. Yeah. So it's at an, it's at the 98th decimal place, but it's the 99th digit. Uh, it's the six, and then the seven is is at the is the hundredth one. So there you go. It's also in E, of course. Um, it's the it's the sixtieth and the sixty first digit of E. Probably elsewhere in E. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Of yeah. course, it's, it's it's elsewhere in pi as well. It's the it's the two hundred thirty fifth and the two hundred thirty sixth uh, digit of pi as, again. So it obviously crops up again. I did wonder if it was the six and seventh um, digit of any number, and it is. Uh, it's something called Champenowns constant, uh, but it's a bit of a cheat. Um, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's a bit of a cheat. I, I, you'll be annoyed by this because, of course, Champenowns constant you construct like this. It's zero point one two three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and you construct it like that, right? So it's almost by construction that it's this. You know, nah. They discount the zero. It's the sixth and seventh. Um, you don't like that one, nah. Ah, well, it, it 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 is a constant which has six, six, seven as its six, seven position, but it's the only one I could find. Well, there'll be an infinite number of numbers where six and seven. Yeah, is. but are they interesting numbers? Are they are they are they named? Are they significant in any way? That's the question, right? So, um, six, seven. We should also talk about sixty-seven. Is obviously a, a, another interesting number. Now, sixty-seven is a prime number. Okay, it's also a sexy prime number. So a sexy prime is a prime number that is six places away from another prime. But more than that, it's part of a sexy prime triple Brady. Triple sexy? It's triple sexy, yeah. Show so, me. So I'll show you. So, well, it's just, it's what it said. And it's actually sat right in the middle of it. So 61. It's in a sexy prime sandwich. It is in a sexy prime sandwich. So 61, 67. And 73. These are all sexy primes, differing by six. And, and as you can see, our, our 67 sitting there right in the middle there. So it's a, bit, it's a sexy prime. And it's the, you know, right in the middle of its little sexy prime triple. So there you go. Right. Um, what else? Okay, it's not just a prime, really. It's, um, it's not just a sexy prime. It's a super prime as well. <laughs> so what's a super prime? So if you write out all the prime numbers, and then, uh, so obviously 67, we know it's a prime number, so it's going to be there. And we ask, where are you in the prime number table? Okay, so 67 is the 19th prime number and 19 is a prime number. So that makes 67 a super prime. Okay, so you so, know what I'm going to ask? What? What's the 67th prime number? Oh, should we check? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's 331 really. Okay. Disappointing, all right. No, because if oh, you Oh, six, add, yes, yes, add, I see it. Yeah. You add the two threes, <laughs> yeah. you get a six. Yeah, and the other one, you get a seven. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool. We got it, we got it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, excellent. So we've got super primes. 67 is a super prime. It's not a super, super prime, then. So a super, super prime is a prime number at a super prime position. So they do exist. Uh, there are plenty of, of super, super primes. You, of course, carry on like this. You can say super, super, super prime, which is obviously a prime number at a super, super prime position and so on. You can, you can really sort of imagine this. So, so what's true is that if I take super, I don't know, to the K prime, so I've got, I've got K supers, right? And K is some finite number. Yeah. Then this will always, there'll always be an infinite number of numbers that will satisfy this. Yeah. But if I take K to infinity, I'm going to conjecture that there are, there are no numbers that satisfy it. I think that's true. It's kind of weird, right? So you've got an infinite, so for any finite k, I'll have an infinite number of super to the k primes. Super, 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 yeah, super, yeah. super, yeah. For any finite number, no matter, I can take three, three of these guys, yeah. and there'll still be an infinite number of them. Yeah. But if I take the number of supers to be itself infinite, yeah. I end up with nothing. Nothing survives. Mm. It's kind of weird, isn't it? The lowest number in the table is going to just grow and grow and grow and grow and grow with k. And so until you take k to infinity, then it just, it just falls off the page, essentially. You see what I mean? I'll let the set theorists... Let the set theorists figure it out, but that's my conjecture. So, All right. <laughs> um, okay. The Padilla conjecture. Is it, can we call it Padilla conjecture? 
Yeah, let's call it Cthulhu Cthulhu. If, if, I don't know if, if it's been conjectured before. I don't know if it has. It could be yours. Yeah, let's have it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we can share it with you, really. All right. It's Christmas, right? Let's share the love. All right. Okay. Next six, seven. six, seven. Six, seven. Uh, so, six, seven, another cool thing about six, seven. Now, my wife told me not to tell you about this one, but I like it, and I think it's good, and I think you'll agree, Brady. So, let's, let me tell you this one, right? You have to take, you have to construct the prime orioles which are products of primes, okay? So, so the nth primorial is just two times three times five until, and then you carry on taking these products until you get to the nth prime. Okay, so the fortunate numbers are what you get. You have to ask, what do I have to add to this number 